how to promote your OnlyFans using Instagram. What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be going over how you can use Instagram to get more fans into your OnlyFans business. So this video is for educational purposes so I can teach you some of the methods that I use to get my clients paying subs to their sites. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe down below. There is so much content coming for you guys on how you can make money online. If you're looking for any services to help you grow your OnlyFans or Fansly business, please reach out to me on Instagram. My links are always in the video description down below. I have OnlyFans promotion for guaranteed fans, Twitter management services, Reddit management services, IG management services, YouTube management services. So there are so many things that I can help you with. I also am a coach and I can coach you how to scale your business as well. So definitely reach out on Instagram. Now let's get into it. So I want to discuss a few things uh, in the beginning for beginners. If you are just starting out, but even if you aren't a, like a real beginner or newbie and you know, you kind of have already a established page, these are still good practices to keep in mind. And that is your profile. Okay. So your profile, you don't have to overthink this. I have so many clients that literally spend days like, Oh, my bio, my picture, what should I write? It doesn't have to be anything I would say, you know, too detrimental to where, you know, you really have to drive yourself nuts to think that your bio has to be like absolutely perfect. A really just cute bio stating a few things about yourself, your demographics, you know, like Aquarius or Leo or something like that, right? Brunette, I love to have fun. And the biggest piece of advice though about your bio is going to be your links. So the number one thing that I cannot emphasize enough is making sure your link works. I cannot tell you how many clients I take on and all of my clients, I will do a social media audit for them and I will go directly to their links and I will check it out. I will click it. And what happens? So many of my clients have dead links. It is going nowhere. And then they're sitting there scratching their head, wondering why they're not getting any traffic to their sites. So you need to make sure that the link that you have, and even if it's a third party link, making sure every link within that third party link is working correctly. Okay. So what you're going to do with that link though, is you have to make sure that you have some type of CTA on your page, which is a call to action. A call to action is terminology and marketing where you really want your, your clients, which would be at this point, a follower to take a specific action on your page so you can convert them into a paying customer. So that last line of your bio that should be visible, your bio should not have where they have to click and see more. They should not have that. Okay. Your bio should be short, sweet, and they'd be able to see everything without having to do an extra step to see more on your, um, in your bio. So that last line in your bio is going to say, come get more of me with, you know, a little finger emoji going down or, you know, come check out my exclusive content with a finger emoji going down. So you are telling them what action they want to take. And that is to go below into the link. Now your profile picture, it cannot be anything too spicy. You don't ever want to put your account at risk but you have to make sure that your content is good. There's so many clients also that, you know, when I'm doing their management, they'll send me the Google drive and a lot of their content I will not use because it is poor lighting. It's not centered. I don't even know what I'm looking at. Sometimes it's, it's, I I've gotten that before you have to understand where you are right now in an age where content does matter. Now, do you have to drive yourself absolutely nuts about, you know, making sure everything is perfect. No, you don't want to burn yourself out before you even begin, but you know, getting a ring light, making sure that you are sitting in front of a window. So you have good lighting, things are centered. And if they're not centered, at least crop them. So they are centered things that are like literally, you know, beginner level stuff that is super doable and achievable for you. Now I do have an Amazon must haves list that I give for free for anyone that follows me on Instagram and, you know, DMs me that they want it. 
And in that list, I have some of my recommendations for ring lights that are super reasonably priced that you can get directly off of Amazon that I've used before if you want that. But please make sure that your profile picture is of good quality. You can see, you know, what the actual picture is. Outside of that, you don't really need to do anything else with your profile picture and your link. Just making sure that link works is is really the biggest thing. Now for your content, the content, you still want the same exact things that I mentioned just before, which is making sure things are centered, making sure that things have good lighting, are good quality, and you don't want to be posting anything too spicy. This isn't Twitter or Reddit, which I have videos for those two platforms as well. So definitely check those out. But this isn't Twitter or Reddit where you can really put spicy content on the platform. So please make sure you are aware of that so you don't put your account at risk. Secondly is hashtags. Now this is a big one guys. Okay. So with hashtags, Instagram actually has hashtags that they will specifically track to see what accounts are using it and then shadow ban or ban those accounts. Okay. So you really have to make sure that you are really following guidelines or doing not really guidelines, but doing your research about the hashtags that you are using. And a lot of the hashtags that they will follow is like the feed hashtags. They will follow that because that is still some type of um, you know, fetish content that they do not allow on the platform, BBW, Chubby, all that, they track those and it puts your account at risk for being shadow banned or just completely being taken down. So what I say to my clients always is you are either just going to do extensive hashtag research or you are just not going to use hashtags at all because with consistency is how your account would grow anyways but if you still feel like you want to use hashtags use hashtags that would be relevant to you so maybe a brunette maybe a latina um you know maybe a like smile or happy girl or beautiful girl something along those lines do not use the OnlyFans hashtags either, okay? If you start using the OnlyFans hashtags, you will be bombarded by those OnlyFans promotion pages that are complete spam They and a scam. They do not get you any results. They'll message you, oh, my 5 million uh, you know, follower network and this and that, let's promote you. Those are all a scam, okay? If you want legitimate services, you are gonna reach out to me where I actually give my clients and get my clients results. So make sure you aren't using those OnlyFans promotional, um, OnlyFans hashtags, because then you will also be bombarded with scammers and spammers. So for myself, I do extensive hashtag research for my clients, but what I say to people that reach out to me, if I'm just giving them some, you know, just helpful tips like I am right now is do not use hashtags if you are not going to do research on them. Your competitor's audience. This is a gold mine, guys. Okay. And the reason is because when you are going into your competitor's page and your competitor's audience, you are literally going to a targeted audience that you already know is interested in someone of your demographics. So if it's another Latina, if it's another brunette, if it's another fitness girl, if it's another um, you know bikini model, whoever that person is that is similar to you, that is how you know that you are going to get in front of people that are already interested in a person like you in your demographics. So your competitor's audience is a great way to grow your um, OnlyFans on your Instagram. There you go. I almost got tongue tied there. But it's also a great way to pull them to you know your OnlyFans and get them interested in you. So how would you do that? You would go into the explore page and go into search and just start typing in, you know, models, um, Latinas, stuff like that. And those hashtags to see if anyone has actually used those hashtags, right? After that, that is when you're going to hit accounts and you will be able to find accounts that are of, you know, someone that is close to you. Okay. So that's the easiest way to find some of your competitors on Instagram. Once you do that, you are then going to go onto their page, into their comments and into their followers list. 
And at that point, if you find accounts that do not look, you know, like kind of spammy or that are um, public, and you can, you know, see if they're male, female, whatever, you know, target audience you are trying to reach out to, you are now going to just start engaging in their content and send them a cold DM. In marketing, we call it, uh, and in sales, it's called a cold DM where you reach out to somebody, you know, and you don't really have much rapport with them. So you then would send them a DM, you know, hey, how are you? Like, you know, what's going on? You can also message me on Instagram and I can help you with a DM script if you need help with that. But it's just gonna be something cute, inviting, enticing, and then you can share your link. So this is a great way to grow your OnlyFans using Instagram and your competitor's audience. Now, one thing I do wanna mention about DMing your targeted audience, right? Your competitor's audience, when you start sending out those DMs and you are interacting with them. Instagram only allows us to do a certain amount of, or take a certain amount of actions on their platform every single day. If you do too much, they are going to pick you up as spam or a bot, and you, again, can put your account at risk which I also don't recommend people doing that anyways, doing too much, because again, you're gonna burn yourself out. So having a schedule, you know, where you're just gonna reach out or, you know, uh, follow and kind of interact with maybe 20 of your competitors' followers that day. That is a good kind of um, method and game plan to use where you are not doing too much on the account and you're also not burning yourself out too quickly. Reels. So Reels has become a gold mine, guys. If you can just produce several Reels a week, you can really just skyrocket your account. Now, I do always say to my clients, for my clients, we post anywhere from two to five Reels per day, but we are doing that ourselves. So my clients don't really have to worry about that, but that's how we get the maximum growth. For yourself, if you at least just post one reel per day and you stay consistent for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, your account will completely skyrocket. And with reels on Instagram, uh, no, not like TikTok. I have a video for that, so definitely look out for that. Um, hashtags do not matter with reels on Instagram. If your content is enticing, you will get viewers. And also if you are being active and consistent in your reels, your content will be pushed out automatically. So you don't have to worry about what you need to kind of put in your hashtags. The one thing though is please do not be too spicy or risque on in those reels because again, it's not Twitter or Reddit. You will end up getting your account either banned or shadow banned. With a shadow banned, you will never know that you are shadow banned. Just all of a sudden, you're really not getting any followers. Your posts aren't really getting any traction. Your reels are getting less views. And that's basically what that is. So you have to make sure that when you are producing reels, you have to keep just those few things in mind. Outside of reels is carousels. So carousels is performing really well right now on Instagram. And it's really helpful for you as a model to really be able to pull more people into your account because you are able to just give a little bit more content of yourself. So doing a carousel that has anywhere from about four to 10 pictures of yourself, really like four to eight, I think would be good, but no less than four is definitely a great way also to grow your account. And again, to get people enticed to your content and then want to see more, which in turn will pull them into being a follower and inevitably get them to get onto your OnlyFans for them to subscribe. I really hope this video was helpful. The biggest thing on Instagram though is just being consistent and having good quality content. So make sure that you are sticking with those two things and I guarantee your page will grow, which will then push more traffic to your OnlyFans business. So please subscribe down below, comment if you have any questions or reach out to me on Instagram so I can help you grow your business. Until next time.